without further ado, Ooh. we have prepared a poem for you. Wait, wait, can we be more accurate? <laughs> Kristen. Kristen has prepared a poem for us. Yeah. Were you specifying that just in case it goes down? No, like, no it's like, it's so okay. yeah. We don't want to take any credit for this All right. gloriousness. <laughs> Right. So good. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, and hope set up Santa suit soon would be there. The children were nestled in peach tree bluff with Christmas and hurricanes, not nearly enough. <laughs> And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled in the forest of vanishing stars for a nap. <laughs> when once upon a wardrobe there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a hawk, tore open the shutter, and there was <gasps> Ron Block! Ron Block! <laughs> The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow showed Brenda and Lisa standing below. <laughs> Yay! When what to my wondering eyes should come on, but our director Meg and our producer Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, best day ever. I haven't seen that before. <laughs> With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his authors they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Julia, now Anita, now Julie and Viola. On Rachel, on Susan, on Courtney and Sidiqua. To the holiday gift prize, to this bundle of books. Now dash away, dash away, dash away. Look. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew with a sleigh full of books and St. Nicholas too. And then filled with gratitude that knows no end, we reached out to thank you, our friends and fiction friends. As I drew in my head and was turning around, a cross-country Christmas swept by with a bound. St. <laughs> Nick was dressed all in fur from his head to toe. And I leaned in to hear the secret of snow. <laughs> a bundle of toys he had flung on his back and a magical New York Christmas came rushing back. Aww. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. It's a wonderful Christmas, I thought. How very. <laughs> His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow. And you could win all of these gifts. Books, you know. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth. And his TBR list was long enough to wind into a wreath. <laughs> Good one. He had a broad face and some fuzzy red pants. And he said he was excited about the debutante's last dance. <laughs> <laughs> He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and he hoped to read Reckless Girls as a gift to himself. <laughs> a wink of his eye and the nod of his nature of his head soon gave me to know there were no fragile things to dread. <laughs> he spoke not a word, but went straight to his life and filled all the stockings with the book, Yellow White. <laughs> and laying his finger, which that does not look good. I'm not doing that. <laughs> laying his finger on his pile of books, he gave thanks to all the authors and their great story hooks. <laughs> That's a good line. He sprang to his sleigh, but before his reindeer could leave, he said, hey, Rudolph, we're taking a short reading reprieve. <laughs> then I heard him exclaim with all his friends in fiction might, happy Christmas to all readers and to all a good night. Yay! Yay!